Hi, I'm Sean Carruthers, and welcome to How Do I on Butterscotch.com. In this series, we're showing you how to build a PC. In this episode specifically, we're talking about the hard drive. The hard drive is where you have all the long-term storage on your computer, your documents, all the videos you want to keep. Everything you want to keep goes onto this drive. Now inside the hard drive, there's a series of magnetic spinning platters that are written to and read from, and that's where you get all the information from on your system. It writes to the platters and then pulls it off it and then sends it to the rest of the components. If you're getting a new hard drive, chances are you're getting one that has a serial ATA or SATA interface. These are edge connectors rather than the old ones that used pins to connect to the system. In this case, it has an edge connector for both the data transfer to the system and for the power. And for this, we'll actually need cables for this. In this case, we've got one cable that attaches to our power supply, or you'll find one like this that is already attached to your power supply. And we have a data cable that connects to the motherboard. Now there's a couple factors that will determine the type of drive that you get in the end. One of them is capacity. Now if you're going to be storing a lot of stuff, you'll either want a high capacity drive, something that has over a terabyte, or you may want a couple of different drives in your system. And most new motherboards can handle more than one drive, either as separate drives or in a RAID configuration where you can combine them into faster drives or larger drives. The other thing you want to look at is the spindle speed, or how fast the drive spins. Most of the drives for consumers come in two different speeds, 5400 RPM or 7200 RPM. Now the 7200 RPM drive is typically faster than the 5400 RPM drive, but be warned it runs a bit hotter, so you want to be sure that your system can handle the extra heat and you've got proper cooling inside if you're going to run more than one 7200 RPM drive inside. Another spec you want to look at is the buffer size on the drive. Now this is the amount of memory that it uses to buffer the information as it's coming in from the system or sending it out. The bigger the buffer size on the drive, the more reliable your performance is going to be, but it will add cost to the drive. Now the next step in the process is to locate where the drives actually go into your system. In this case, we have a series of bays down here where the drives can go, and each of them has a ridge that will hold the drive up into its individual bay. To put the drive in, we want to take it, make sure that the interface is facing back out towards the system, because you need access to those interfaces in order to power it and to connect it to the motherboard, and you slide it into place. Now you notice that there are a couple of screw holes on the side here, and these are what we want to mount. So we want to make sure that both of those are available in the slot that is exposed. Locate the proper screws that came with your case. In this case, they're the six-sided screws with the Phillips head. And what we'll do is we'll now find the screw holes and screw this into place. Next, we need to connect power to the drive. So we either locate the proper connector that's attached directly to the power supply, or we get out the cable we need, in this case, from the box. Connect it up into the power supply up top. Then we'll connect the other end of the cable onto the drive itself. Next, we need to attach the data portion to the motherboard. First, we find where the serial ATA slots are on the motherboard. They're the ones that have a little L-shaped connector. We take the cable and put the plug end into one of those on the motherboard end. And then we plug the other end into the back of the hard drive, right beside the power. And that's how we install a hard drive into the machine. Now we have another few slots in here and we have another few connectors on the motherboard so we could connect some more drives to this as well in exactly the same way. Or we could use a RAID configuration. Now not everybody needs RAID, it's a little bit more enthusiast level and most users won't need it typically. Don't forget to check out the other parts in this series where we show you how to install other components into this system. And don't forget to check out the show notes for this series at butterscotch.com.